Welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you. No stranger to our studios, Kimberly Brutus, who's a licensed associate broker. She's in the house with us again yet tonight, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Kimberly Brutus. Kim, welcome back to our studios Hi, today. Lydia. How are you? Great to have you back as always. Thank especially you. someone who has so much knowledge in the field of real estate, it's such a big topic, especially here in Brooklyn, with so much changes. So let's it. let's dive into it. Um, with all the changes, like I was saying, mm -hmm. let's take it back a little bit for those who may be interested in getting into real estate. Mm -hmm. There's commercial properties, regular properties. What's your take on the whole thing? As in terms of being an agent or the industry well, itself, the field itself. Let's start with the industry. Okay. Um, is very specialized. You know, someone <coughs> who deals in commercial, I've seen that they typically only deal with commercial. Okay. Um, commercial is a beast of its own. You know, commercial leases are very complicated. So I noticed that the people who do do commercial do not do anything else. And when I mean they don't do anything else, they don't do residential. They only do commercial. And commercial can mean um, buying a multifamily building. Mm -hmm. So someone can look at that like it's residential. Yes, it's residential, but it falls under commercial sales because of the magnitude and the size of it. And what would technically be considered um, a multi-dwelling home? Like you said, I may look at that as a residential property. Um, Legally, what makes it officially um, commercial? I would say it's the deal. If it's you know, smaller units, like something maybe less than five, maybe a, a, a normal brokerage company can handle that. But something like a building with 100 units, that's a commercial deal. Yeah. That's I, a commercial I, deal. That would definitely be a commercial deal. Yeah, so deal. something 50 units, 50 and above is a commercial deal. 50? 50 units. Okay. 50 but if units. you have like a two-family home, that would not be considered? No, that wouldn't be considered commercial. That would be considered a regular residential sale okay and we'll and we'll focus on that a little bit later on in the program um for s let's say people are maybe interested in buying or selling right now and mm -hmm. that's a lot transition you mm -hmm. know there's we're seeing people flip their homes mm -hmm. we're seeing people in different parts of brooklyn they may not want to do it themselves they may want of course most people try to get an agent mm -hmm. what's the difference between an agent and a broker well the difference is an agent works underneath a broker a broker can also work underneath a broker, and they themselves is called an associate broker. So an associate broker is someone who has the know-how, who has the experience to go out on their own, but they just choose not to go out on their own and work under someone else. A broker is is someone who decided to open up their own shop, and now they're calling themselves a licensed real estate broker. And like I said, they can open up their own shop, open their own office, and deal with their clientele directly, and hire agents as well so agents so the the hierarchy is agents associate broker and broker okay and that's really interesting because that's a topic that came up that some of our viewers were it's confusing you know you sometimes you see it do agent broker what's the difference well the difference is volume mm -hmm. so when you're a real estate agent there's a certain number of deals or a certain number of things that you need to accomplish in order to become a broker Really? Yeah. So you you need I, if you're if you're looking at it in terms of renting apartments, you need to rent X amount of apartments in order to qualify. Um, I think according to the New York State Licensing Division, I think they say two full time years as a real estate agent, and that will qualify qualify you as a broker. Not qualify you, but you can take the necessary steps to become an associate broker or a broker. But two full time years as a real estate agent. And then after that, you can start looking into the options of becoming an actual broker. And that's pretty interesting because you see all of these, especially with like Rapid Realty mm -hmm. and they have ads everywhere recruiting people, mm -hmm. you know, making it seem so glamorous and easy that you could get into the game, 
start making money and I'm sure yes there is a lot of money to be made but I'm also sure it's not as easy as everyone makes it seem no it's definitely not easy and something that I've learned is time management you need to be able to utilize your time wisely because now your time everyone wants to waste your time not waste your time but everyone has a real estate question everyone wants to always know what's going on in real estate so for you as a real estate agent you have to figure out okay well what is going to be the most fruitful if not today but a month from now six months from now a year from now mm -hmm. so if you're just going around and you're just giving advice to everyone and anyone are you really utilizing your time in an efficient manner? And Very what sort true. of agent are you? Are you an agent that wants to go out and secure their own business? That means if you're a rental agent going out and securing your own landlords in order to build your own pipeline. Um, there isn't a one-size-fit-all answer because as an independent contractor, your business is your business to grow however you see fit. But I would say for anyone, regardless of how you want to grow your business, time management. You need to know what it is. You need to know how to budget your time. You need to be able to set aside time for downtime, you know, time for you to relax. That is actual time that you need to carve out because what happened is if you are just an agent working seven days a week, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with that, in your first mm -hmm. year, your first two years, you should be working seven days a week, but you also need time off. So if you're going to be an agent that says, I'm going to work two days a week, okay, then, you know, you should work three weeks straight and take a week off hmm. so you can always be rejuvenated this is a business where you're always speaking to people um, you're always getting into contact with people and it can take a toll on you mentally and physically especially if you're yes. not taking care of yourself so I would suggest to anyone going into it time management you need to mm -hmm. learn that skill and learn it well and it's something that you can use in your normal day-to-day -day life of course of course um, I want to talk about owning a home mm -hmm. A lot of people have written us and shared inquiries. Basically, you know, they want to know what are some of the intricacies and the, the real deal from your perspective about owning a home. Now, when you own, of course, a lot of people are like, you know, it's so much better to own. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of little things that maybe the viewers need to know about. What are some of the little details, of course, aside from the mortgage payment, um, when you own a home, you have to set money aside for insurance. You have, that's how people get into foreclosure even. Um, share some of the details and the realities of being a homeowner and then we'll go into being on the flip side, being a renter. Um, I would say one thing that homeowners do not think of and that is a capital reserve account. When hmm. a landlord of a multifamily building or a multi-unit building owns a building, they have what's called a capital reserve account. And this reserve account is an account set aside from any other account that they have only for saving for, God forbid, something goes wrong with the building. So if you need a boiler replacement, instead of you panicking, like, where am I going to have the money? If you are steadily f feeding this capital reserve account, then hopefully you should have some money saved up to replace a boiler if you need to replace it, windows if you need to replace it, the roof if you need to replace it, so on and so forth. Things that you probably wouldn't think about. Because once you purchase a home, that's your home and you have to deal with everything that falls apart. Well, hold that thought, Kim. We'll pick that up right after the break. Stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. back you're watching beyond focus tv i'm lydia patel sitting here with kimberly brutus licensed associated broker i love it i love it she's sharing some great information with us so before the break we're talking about once you actually own the home you've put large deposit on this you're making mortgage payments this is yours now so one of the main differences is anything breaks anything goes wrong roof leaks boilers yeah. it falls on you correct 
It right. falls on you. And you were telling us about the capital reserve account? Yes, or just a separate savings account. That's essentially what it is. A savings account to help you save for your home for those unexpected things that happen. Um, a roof pretty much, it's, a roof tells you that I need to be replaced. You start to see leaks in your ceiling. That's evident of a roof leak. Um, just because you have a roof leak, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to replace your entire roof. But if you didn't save to do that little patch job on the roof, it may hit you unexpectedly. So if you have some sort of savings account so that God forbid if anything goes wrong with your home, you can cover it without even panicking about where the funds are coming from. And what other expenses, aside from maybe repairs, mm -hmm. that really come with being a homeowner? Taxes, water, sewer, finance, um, just regular things. People don't estimate. If it's a, a homeowner of a multifamily building, water is definitely on their mind. Um, also taxes, also insurance. But for a single fam for a single family homeowner or a two family homeowner, they need to be aware of their taxes and project that for not just when they're purchasing the home, but project it over a year so that they can budget for that money. Hmm. as well as the water and sewer. If you're saving for the water and sewer, you should save 10% more every year because water goes up, or at least you should add the increase. So if you know the water and sewer next year is going to go up by 10%, then you should add an additional 10% to your savings account so that you can always cover that cost of the increase. Wow, that's really interesting. And these are... and. Like I said, people sent questions in, they emailed, and some of these things are unforeseen. And let's say for like someone who's trying to get into to the game, they want to purchase a home, if you may not feel you're financially ready to take that on, some people are able to maybe get the home, but then you can't maintain the home. Correct. Correct. And that's why you fall into tax lien. Tax lien is a big one. Um, New York City does not care what's going on with your home. They don't care if it's falling apart. Um, if they've assessed taxes against you, you need to pay those taxes. And people ha have gotten their homes taken away from them because they weren't able to pay for the taxes. So taxes is something else that you should be budgeting to pay. You can pay your taxes quarterly. You can pay them semi-annually. You can pay them annually. Um, if you want to be someone to pay your taxes annually, fine. But budget for it so that it's not a shocker to you because your house will be taken away from you. Hmm. And that's a reality of it because you is. see that a lot. It um, is also for water and sewer. Your houses can also be taken away from you for a lack of water and sewer. Oh, really? They put, a, they put a lien against you. That's something I actually didn't know. I knew the taxes. I knew that you could lose your home for that. Mm -hmm. Water and sewer. And what's the rate right now? Um, what's high. the average? I don't even know, but it's high. Oh, Everyone yeah. is different because water depends on usage, and everyone's usage is different. But it is high. I've heard of from a lot of homeowners that the water bill has been going up and up and up with no end in sight. Now, on the flip side, for those who say, you know what, it's more advantageous to just rent. Mm -hmm. We know some of the benefits of being a renter in terms of, okay, you don't got those taxes to pay. You don't, you're usually your rent, your water is built in mm -hmm. to the rent. Mm -hmm. But the reality is a lot of people still deal with landlord issues. And why do you think as much as it tries to be regulated, mm -hmm. You hear those horror stories where people email three, four, or five times. They're calling. They're reaching out. Yet things aren't being repaired. Things aren't being done. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad, especially if you're really in a situation where your landlord is just not maintaining the building. But, you know, I believe there's two sides to every story. And I don't think landlords go in intentionally thinking that I'm going to buy this building and not maintain it. Um, I think things do occur and landlords do fall behind on whatever it is. I'm not saying that it's right. It's not right. But then again, tenants do have recourses of their own that they can do in order to get a situation rectified. And What's the difference when you see a lot of buildings or on the side of a building, you say, a management company? Well, that's, that's required by New York City. Um, New York City Housing Preservation and Development requires...